Hello everyone. I've decided I'm going to vote independent. <laughs> what do I care you say? Well, uh, you know, I'm just going to give you my reasons for it. I welcome your comments. If you think I'm saying something silly or this decision is a silly one, and not helpful please let me know because I'm open to be persuaded otherwise I really am but I'll, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you the reasons uh, first the present members of Parliament at the moment in 2024 I'm talking about England now were elected in 2019 with an 80% majority, you remember, for the Conservatives. Why? Because they were finally, they promised, going to implement the will of the people. The majority of the people had voted Brexit and uh, Parliament had been for three years sort of uh, going back and forth and they would not implement it and, uh, and so on. So all these MPs, new MPs, uh, were elected on their promise that they would allow Brexit to go forward and so on. Okay, so you could argue, well, okay, they were representing the will of the people. Okay, but what have they done since then? For two years, they were practically at home with the um, illness, you know, um, and uh, it seems that they have grown very accustomed to their office and their power already. If you remember, not long ago, one MP, and I forget his name, escapes me at the moment. I Anyway, he, he changed from the Conservative to another party. Gosh, I, for, I forgot his name, but you know who I mean. And he was there in Parliament all by himself talking about the fact that some people had been injured by the, um, you know, I'm measuring my words, so you know why. Um, and they all walked out and there was no one there. And this, this was a legitimate thing to say that they had, many people had come to him with evidence that they had been injured and so on. They walked out. Uh, that was going against the establishment or the established uh, narrative. And they have moved on now to more and more sort of um, authoritative things, you know, the misinformation and malinformation and all these things and surveillance and all these laws that are now accepted only because they were brought as emergency, we thought, as emergency, uh, emergency things during the pandemic and now they stay there and they feel that they can tell you what you can say and not say. I'm, I'm, I'm just terribly disappointed. So my, my reason for voting independent is just so that I think we need to change all of them. <laughs> if I could, I would just kick all of them out and bring in new people. And now that is extreme and that you may argue is a little bit silly because new people coming in would not necessarily know how to govern. But it doesn't matter. I have thought about it and I thought something needs to give here. We need to we need to get to a point where there is a little bit of a crisis in which the people's voice is is heard and I don't know how else we can do it if we don't vote for the tourists we vote for labor is the same thing or the other I, th I think something has to give here that is why that is my one and only revolutionary thing I can do. I, I can't I can't think of anything else to do. I'm also disappointed in the fact that the way they talk, 
you know, it's there. Fara, uh, utter contempt. It seems to me, am I too sensitive? But the way they lie to us, uh, it, it's as if they're saying, of course I'm lying. I know you know I'm lying, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to continue lying and what can you do about it? The contempt exudes from their mouths. Why? Whom are they serving? If they are not serving the people they represent, if they are not serving their country, are they serving some other master? Who? Are there any treason laws still on the books? Because if they are serving masters who are going against the people of the nation, surely that is pretty close to treason in my mind, anyway. I also see them, um, I don't know why they do this, is this a sign of despair? In other words, that they know that um, people can see now through them, they, they, they can they don't believe them and so now they're just well, well you know whatever and a sign of uh, despair I would say or is it uh, just a show of arrogance because you can't do anything about it and we have ourselves covered uh, you know or both um, The change has happened so rapidly, hasn't it? I remember in, do you remember in 1982 during the Falklands War, um, there was the Defense Secretary, I believe his name was not, double T, um, who offered his resignation and uh, Margaret Thatcher did not accept it. But then Lord Carrington, you remember the uh, Foreign Secretary, offered his resignation and Margaret Thatcher accepted it. And uh, why did he offer his resignation? Uh, he offered his resignation because he felt, being the foreign secretary, that what happened was in his watch and therefore he was responsible, so he had failed in his duties. I, I was living in America at the time and I remember that he was being interviewed by PBS, the Public um, uh, Service Network, the McNeil Lehrer News Hour, a two great journalists at the time. And uh, when they were still asking questions without being aggressive, they would nevertheless, you know, ask the right questions. And, and uh, Mr. Lehrer was interviewing Lord Carrington. At, at one point he said, do you know, Lord Carrington, that you have become a little bit of a folk hero here in America? Folk hero, why? And uh, he said, because you have resigned. He said, here no one resigns anymore. And Lord Carrington actually blushed. You could see it. He was, um, he went all red. Obviously, I don't know whether he was an extremely uh, timid man. I don't think he was, but in any case, he, he, he felt a certain degree of embarrassment about being called a folk hero, being at the center of attention, which was something that the upper classes knew very well not to do, because they, they doing whatever they were doing, they still had the sense of uh, elegance, let's say, if we don't want to go into the moral sphere here. They, they don't resign, obviously, you've heard it many times. It's, um, it, it looks as if they're giving instructions and they are there to carry them out and don't worry. Um, if if you you know that is your mission you know and then we look after you think of all these prime ministers i have mentioned it a couple of times for example the prime minister of uh, um, 
Finland, for example, okay, yeah, that, that lady uh, who used to be in the nightclubs and so on. Okay, so, uh, her mission was to um, bring F Finland to NATO, obviously. Now, that, that was her mission, you do that. Oh, but what if I do and then people don't want it and people will uh, not elect me again? Never mind, of course they're not going to uh, elect you again. Okay, but that that's not important. We have something else for you. You make sure that you do this. It seems as if they have a a mission to do. Or the the lady in New Zealand, you know, th this is this is your mission. Should you <laughs> should you accept it, you better accept it or else. Oh dear. Anyway, uh, so that is the reason why I think. Um, we need to bring everything we, we we need to start anew i think give give the the system which is broken a little bit of a kick in order to um, reboot the the whole system look i was looking at um uh, this little book here can you can you see it Look and from uh, it's about the fall of Rome, okay, and all that the history of Rome, and uh, translated by Robert Graves. Look and Farsalia, okay. So there, he's um, he's 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 going through. He's explaining about what is happening now, and uh, you know, and the 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 decadence and the contempt and all these that we are experiencing now. He he has some lovely. Uh, I I I wrote just a, a few little quotes here. He says, "Now think of Rome, therefore think of the empire." Okay, so we are going from our own country to the empire or to NATO or to call it what you will, but or the West is called now the collect whatever. Um, the powerful, yeah, and he says, Rome turned the imperial sword against her own breast, and asks of of those who were making it possible, what is making them embark on such an orgy of self destruction? None of her enemies succeeded in wounding Rome as deeply as she has wounded herself. Long-lasting national supremacy soon attracts the resentment of fate. I think he's first century. And Rome, top-heavy with her own greatness, had grown ripe for a spectacular collapse. There is never loyalty to one's people or to one's country to be found among despots. Pompey, for example, he says, will would allow no man to be his equal. Caesar would allow no man to be his superior. And so this failure to see the changes that are happening now in the world and to continue to be on top, undisputed hegemon uh, may lead us to, is leading us to problems so <laughs> about the empire, he says, it was resting on its laurels and so it made no attempt to win fresh ones but instead basked in the glory of its name and its power, like a tree that ceases to derive support from its roots, but merely relies now on its bulk to keep it upright. And because it's not fed from the roots, it's going to die. and about the suffering that they were inflicting on people. 
A diet of human blood turns a man into a savage, the emperor. And they shrieked at the gods instead of praying to them. And the people who were starving. What a refinement of cruelty to deny death to the already dying. Oh dear. So. And Caesar said uh, about Pompey, he said, he does not know how to use a victory. And they start abusing it. And then everything else comes. I don't know whether you are familiar. This book is in a very bad state. Are you familiar with Lord Chesterfield's letters to his son? Can you see it? My book is in very bad repair. <laughs> um, I've had it for such a long time. But um, I don't know what happened to it. Too many moves, I think. Um, he's, he's talking to his son. Perhaps I will share it with you. Uh, I will write quotes and uh, sort of discuss them with you in another video. But he's actually telling, he's very, uh, it's, it's uh, Lord Chesterfield. I mean, he was, uh, you know, the aristocracy for sure. And he's uh, writing to his son about how to behave with dignity as a member of the upper class. You know, it's only the new rich and the, the, the ones who have just got power who uh, shout at the servants, for example. Okay, those with a little bit of class obviously don't. Yeah. So he's uh, writing to him about how to comport himself in Parliament, in life. He's not necessarily teaching him morality. He's, he's saying, um, perhaps I will read you two quotes. <laughs> but uh, he's saying to, the, to him that beware and not show any arrogance especially when you are at the top of the ladder because that will bring you down and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's vulgar. He was teaching him how to behave as a upper class when they, whatever other things they did, empire and all the rest, they were at least elegant. <laughs> he says the uh, the arrogant pedant does not communicate but uh, promulgates his knowledge. Oh, he's telling him how to, how important it is to debate, to speak properly, how to, de how to debate a point, uh, which our politicians at the moment cannot do, as I said. This says, the, uh, the arrogant pedant does not communicate but promulgates his knowledge. He does not give it to you, but he inflicts it upon you. And he is, if possible, more serious to show you your own ignorance than his own learning. Um, uh, I'll, I'll have to share this with you at some point. I can't go through, through that at the moment. But... My point is that even the upper crust knew how to behave and they don't seem to do that anymore. They, they, they have let us down <laughs> uh, tremendously. Um, when I think about the present day aristocrats, Lord Cameron and uh, Boris Johnson for example yeah I think I shared with you at some other time many months ago how in Oxford they belong to this the 
what was it, the Bullington Club, the Bullington Club, something like that. It was a group of upper class boys, rich boys, and they. One of the tricks that they had um, was to go around, and whenever they found someone begging in the streets or a homeless person, they would actually burn put fire to a 50 pound note in front of that person. Now you see that is not a mistake, that is not something that one does when you're young because you can't think and you're too young, no, I, I don't think so. I think that goes to character. I think a morally sensitive person for a, for for another person that would not necessarily be a, a joke other things perhaps you know but not that so the uh, the upper classes in England have changed they have no class they have no dignity they have no elegance That's the least of it. I'm even doubting whether they have love for their country, the way they behave. So, uh, nothing else to say. Let me know whether you think it's silly to vote independent, but that is what I'm going to do, I think. But I'm open to persuasion otherwise, okay? Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.